Ron Kruk of Access TV Fights, joined by the number one ranked LFA flyweight, Roberto Sanchez, preparing for your first title fight here in the LFA. Roberto, you basically grew up in the legacy organization, I think 10 total fights. So how special is this to be the first to fight for the inaugural LFA flyweight title? Yeah, you know, me doing 10 matches for Legacy wasn't by accident, it was intentional, you know. I love Legacy, they've always treated me well and it's a great promotion, they've always given me tough guys. And uh, you know, I'll never forget, Colin told me, he's like, where you wanna go pro with one of these other promotions or you wanna go pro with Legacy? And that, that stuck with me. So, you know, I've stuck with them and they've taken care of me and I'm, I'm doing big things now, so. Yes, you are. You get the title shot and you get to do it in front of the hometown Houston family and friends. How cool is that? Uh, that's awesome. You know, I've been fortunate that I've been able to do most of my matches here, but I also did do some in uh, Louisiana and elsewhere just to get that experience. But, uh, you know, it's exciting. Well, let's talk about this exciting matchup with Jerome Rivera. Really, you two on paper have similar fighting styles. You're both great grapplers and your Brazilian jiu-jitsu is off the hook. So why do you feel you have the advantage when this fight goes to the ground? Uh, you know, I, I, I'm sure I've said this before, but I don't think anyone at 125 can match me on the ground. So it doesn't matter who you put in front of me. Uh, I'm going to try to take them to the ground and grapple with them. See, and, and, you know, for the most part, no one wants to grapple with me. They try to stand back up, but uh, we'll see what he does. What an opportunity for you, Jerome. Give us your thoughts as you go into probably the biggest fight of your life. Um, I'm just feeling very thankful, very blessed um, to have an opportunity like this. I'm really excited. It was always a big accomplishment for me in my career to fight for a title at some point, and I'm glad that it came so soon. Very thankful. You and Sanchez have very similar fighting styles on paper. Both good grapplers, very impressive Brazilian jiu-jitsu. So why do you feel you have the advantage on the ground? Um, I feel like we do have similar styles that we like the submissions. I feel like I've gotten a little bit more of my submissions with my ground and pound, kind of uh, almost getting to a TKO and then I'm kind of falling into the submission. I feel like he more tries to pull people into the submission game, which is something I'm not always trying to do. I know I got a lot of my wins by submission, but it's not something I'm focusing on exactly. I, I go out there and I try to strike with people. I try to wrestle with people. I like to beat people up with the ground and pound and stuff like that. So. Yeah, I feel like that's the difference in our jiu-jitsu game, and I feel like my ground and pound is, will make a difference when we hit the ground. Well, then let's talk about the stand-up game, too. You have a pretty extensive amateur kickboxing background as well. Do you think you have a distinct advantage in the stand-up and striking? Yeah, I feel like I've gotten more rounds um, striking before because I had those amateur kickboxing fights. I just feel like I'm more experienced of a striker than him. I feel like he's a little bit green when it comes to the boxing and striking area, and I think that's something that I'll be able to expose. This will be your first fight for LFA at flyweight. So how are you different fighting at 125 than 135? I feel like I'm going to be faster, um, and then one thing taking out from my last fight, um, I just have a big height advantage. Like in comparison, when I fought Zach Riley, he was really strong. He had the size advantage on me. I feel like at flyweight, I'll have the size advantage on almost anybody I fight. So I feel like I'll be stronger, could hit harder, keep a good range on people. Jerome, how do you see yourself ending this fight? Give us a prediction. Um, I see myself, as long as I'm patient, keep a good range, I think I can win by TKO. Very good. We're looking forward to it. Best of luck. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. How do you visualize you ending this fight? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking to get that takedown in the first round. I'm going to eventually get his back, and I'm going to submit him. So I'm looking for that first round submission always. Roberto, you were featured on Dana White's show looking for a fight. We broadcast it. He was here at Legacy. He was checking you out, and he was impressed. He said, get a couple more wins, and we're interested. Well, if you win tonight, that'll be your third straight. Do you feel the UFC will be calling next? Uh, I hope so, you know. Uh, ever since he told me that, that's what I've been, that's what I've been grinding for, you know. And, uh, you know, I, I, he said a couple more, but I didn't just go and fight Scrubs. This will be the second out of those three that's undefeated. The other one, which was Clayton Mai, had a couple losses, but he was a Bellator vet, so I'm not fighting Scrubs. You know, I'm fighting tough guys, and I'm looking for that call-up. Roberto Sanchez, we appreciate the time. Thank you. All right, one of two title fights going down here in Houston at LFA 14 and exclusively live on Access TV, 9 p.m. Eastern and 6 Pacific. Pat Militich and I will have the call 
Don't miss it. These middle whites, they just don't understand this left hand for anybody on this planet to sleep. I'm gonna go in there, finish them, make it look easy. I want my belt. This is what championship MMA is all about. The pro debut for Colby Northcutt. The future of MMA is on display tonight. Oh, yeah.